Just an average person in the world is rear-ended by a drunk driver. I got a phone call. Your dad's been in an accident. He was burned over 75% of his body. He was almost unrecognizable. A face transplant was introduced into his medical conversation. 68-year-old Robert Chelsea is the first African-American and the oldest person to receive a full face transplant surgery. It's like the mask movie. To be able to address a person without intimidating them would be a major relief. What we didn't really realize is what we were up against. This is the day and the hour. Facial transplantation has a lot of risks. Squeeze. Relax. He's not just going to have this procedure and everything's just going to be smooth sailing. It's so rare to find a black face. We didn't know how rare it was. He's a science experiment. This has been probably one of my greatest challenges in life. Robert is a unique man, not a typical transplant candidate. People see you and they try not to see you. Is this face really worth it? Anybody that has something different, I want them to have hope. When I look in the mirror, I know it's me, but I see another person. August 5th, 2013 is when the accident occurred. Don't know where I was coming from. My car was overheating. Smoke was coming up from the radiator area. I managed to go over to the shoulder of the freeway. I noticed the truck swerving over and ran straight into me. And then all of a sudden, the car blew up. <laughs> and it seemed like I was going through a, a long tunnel of fire. I literally thought a missile came across the freeway, so I pulled forward where I saw the explosion and the fire, pulled up to it and ran to the vehicle. Then I see Robert in the vehicle on fire flailing around, cut Robert's seatbelt, reached in and grabbed him and pulled him out. Once they rolled me into the gurney, I laid back. I closed my eyes to relax and just wait for somebody to pick me up. We just all got in the car and we rushed over there, so. They described exactly what happened with the accident and then I was just in shock. I can't describe the feeling while in a coma. I had no worries, no problems, no complaints. I had a friend of whom had no face. He just gave me a sufficient amount of assurance that everything was okay. One thing I like about my dad is his love for the Lord. I can really lean on that. It seemed like the the Lord just <sighs> He just just covered me. <laughs> the next thing I knew, when I woke up, it was six months later. We were thrilled and our prayers had been answered when my godfather woke up. But what we didn't really realize is what we were up against. My godfather has since been through upwards to 40 surgeries. He was burned over 75% of his body, mostly upper body. He had lost his lips, a part of his nose, a part of his ear. He was almost unrecognizable. You know, he's the type of person that's always going to ask you how you're doing, even when he's sitting in pain. Can you imagine having no lips and your lips being open all the time when you walk and don't try to run? Flies and everything, dust, smoke, uh, the car 
exhaust that goes right into your mouth. I could shower everywhere except for my face. I would notice, like anything else, you know, if you look a little strange, people see you, they're walking past you, and they see you and they try not to see you. But on the other hand, there are people of goodwill or charity. There are people that care. Did you survive cancer or something? I was in an auto accident. A drunk driver ran into me and the car blew up. Oh man, God bless you, brother. After several years into my godfather's recovery, a face transplant was introduced into his medical conversation. The first donor the first face. happened to have very light skin. I thought nothing of it to pass on the first face. He said, we're not gonna accept the donor. And I was like, what, wait, skirt. Let's talk about this. It was just, the, the contrast was just so great. It was quite significant when you think about, you know, how he was gonna look afterwards. And I also thought at that time that there would be other opportunities rather soon. There's a serious lack of donors in the black community and in minority communities as it relates to the need. It's so rare to find a black face. We didn't know how rare it was. In July of 2019, we got the call. The night that I received the call from Dr. Pomerhawk, I asked him, is this real? Are you, are you calling? Because he said, yes, I have a donor for you, Robert. My godfather had to be prepared, packed, and ready to fly to Boston from Los Angeles the next morning. This is the right time. This is the, the day and the hour. To be honest, at first I thought it was silly. You had this whole accident, and then now all of a sudden, you have a whole facial transplant and go through a whole nother situation. To be able to address a person without intimidating them would be a major relief. I like to articulate my words together so that I can communicate better. I'd like to give the drink. And uh, it's, it's also very important that my extension of affection, particularly to my own daughter, I like to give the kiss her cheeks. I realize he's doing it for health purposes. Now I'm like, oh, okay. I kind of see the benefits of it. my friend. You're hanging in there. You're doing good? Yeah, I am. Good to see you. Good to see you too. You look good. Yeah, man. Feeling all right? The fundamental principle of all transplantation is that we recover organ. In our case, it's the face. Cool it down so that it doesn't uh, require as much energy and uh, literally bring it to Robert. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'll be better in about 15 hours, but... Uh, hey, we all be good in 15 hours. <laughs> So uh, what we will do is we'll probably be able to get the scalp somewhere all the way up here, maybe even a little bit back, but just about there. Mm -hmm. And then the whole face. Does that sound okay? You come through. In this case, the donor was in other state, so it required flying to recover and back. The deciding factor how far we can travel and where the donor can be from is the time that we have between when the blood flow through the tissue stops to the time when it's reestablished. Facial transplantation has a lot of risks. The ideal scenario is that we come with the donor face and Robert would be on the OR table with everything ready to go. So all the vessels would be prepared, all the nerves would be prepared. Uh, all the structures that we discuss in the team meeting are essentially ready to be uh, connected. I happen to be the first black person to have a full face transplant. I happen to be the oldest as well in the whole world. 
To be honest, I think the color of skin never played a role except of the match of the donor and the harder detection of rejection. But I think we all know about disparities in health and health delivery, and it's good that African-American patients that suffer from major facial deformities are aware that there is an option for them. It is probably one of the most amazing sights I've ever seen. Believe it or not, he was already moving. There were already facial expressions. He's got new nose, he's got new lips, he's got all the muscles and skin of the face and a big part of the scalp. I really do see the same person. Now, what looks really different is he has hair. It actually is funny because they start next day, you see the hair growing. It doesn't matter that it's on someone else, it just continues to do things that it does. My face was you know, swollen. I knew the veins and the blood vessels had to be connected, but I didn't expect all the zingers all day, all night until I go to sleep. Certain things shock me. Imagine having a man that was your dad for 31 years, and then you wake up and it's a whole nother man there. It's sad that he has to open his mouth for me to realize that that's my dad. Who do I see when I look in the mirror? I see another person that Robert is gonna to have to get used to. That's what I see. Since the transplant, I have contracted diabetes, which has affected my, uh, you know, my kidneys. It's amazing that the number of internal organs that have been affected as a result of the face transplant. This gland in here, that's because every six weeks they take a biopsy of my face. I took approximately 16 tablets this morning. And in the afternoon, I haven't got another six or so. And then this evening, I'll be taking another five or six pills. And that's every single day. They may change every day also. It's not like he can miss a day, he has to take them, or he's in jeopardy of his organ being rejected by his body. Morning, Robert. I feel that now he's getting sick. I mean, it's just all types of things are going on with this. Your uh, temperature is still a little bit high, isn't it? It's not too high, but it's like a low grade temperature, it's 99.0. A lot for one day too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day at a time, bro. It's okay. All right, sir. I will see you Monday. Thanks, Julio. The degree of attention that's needed uh, quite often is far beyond one individual. So it becomes a, 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 a great burden on your caregiver my daughter will spend around three nights with me. He's a science experiment. And then all of a sudden, you're wondering, what is really wrong with you? Is this face really worth it? I make meals every time I come here on the weekends. I'm preparing um, enchiladas, rice, and beans. And I'm sad, mad, or whatever, I can go and cook a meal and listen to my music and zone out. Right now, I think both of my parents, they love me unconditionally and they do the best they can. Much of this is uncontrollable. These things happen, and then you get in, uh, involved. Uh, from that point on, it's better that you go through it and enjoy the ride.
because it will be a ride. Robert's transplant surgery was over a year ago, and due to the coronavirus restrictions on travel, we postponed his in-person visits for now a number of months. Mr. Chelsea, come on in. The overarching problem that we're trying to avoid is rejection. Every patient develops a rejection. The body essentially is trying to get rid of tissues that it recognizes at a given time as foreign. Yeah, we need to open up the eyes a bit, huh? Look at that, that would be better, wouldn't it? Right now, my eyes, uh, you know, are not, uh, I, I can't even see the television clear with my good eye. Do you feel normal? How about here? Anything on the cheeks? Cheeks, not so much. Not so much. Can you feel hot and cold? Can you no. tell the temperature? No. no? Uh, so there, there are things we could do surgically to make things better but we don't have to. Everything kind of sagged down by gravity and by the fact that the new face is not as strongly connected to the bone. And I would have to open up the entire incision all around. So all the way around your head, all the way down to the neck. And then I would have to lift things up and uh, suspend them. This is completely elective, so it doesn't have to happen next month or tomorrow. When I smile, yeah. I don't, it doesn't look any different than when I, I frown or conquer. The procedure would help me to drink more uh, or easier and, and also close my lips so that I could suck uh, using a straw, for an example. The nerves are reconnected, but your brain is learning which ones are supposed to be controlled by what and trying to differentiate movements with help of our speech therapist will help to retrain some of the nerve. You will still be getting better. There's another year that we know our patients are getting fairly dramatically better. And then at about two years from the surgery, that's where it plateaus. Yeah. Let me actually take a quick picture. I'll have you stand up for me here. Smile. All right, good. A year out, I think Robert's doing great. He's uh, progressing well from the transplant standpoint. Robert is a unique man. He is very spiritual, thoughtful. He really believes in God's plan for him. I think for him the biggest issue is adjustment of his daily life to the new routine. His name was Richard and he, he's the very one that God sent to help me out of the car and bring me to safety the day, the night of my accident. And so we have been talking and meeting and visiting ever since I've been out to the hospital, he and his family. I met Robert through his tragic car accident where I pulled him from the car. It, I, ironically, that particular night, I was finishing a job and I left particularly early that day. Robert's first words to me were, how's the other driver? Is he okay? And I said, yes, sir, he's fine. I tried to get him to move and he screamed. His skin had, was completely melted. He couldn't move. He was just in shock. Robert, you want to say grace? We not only ask you to bless the food. I have been blessed to have been introduced to Robert. Robert and I have become very, very, very close friends. Well, I've explained this to you before, but your faith and your unwilling waverness is, gives me tremendous strength. I feel the same way about you, except you can go into the midst of a fire and rescue others without a second thought. That's rare. This is what I used to look like before.
trip periods of life I had one hair, I had a uh, full cool hair, had a hair here. It was, it was receding, but you had hair. I used to wear mustache. Sometimes I would wear a full cool beard. This was at your graduation. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. I was very happy. I was joyful. This is a important picture because at least uh, I got a chance to spend that very special time with Ebony and her mother. Well, even today, a year later, easing in is still a little process for me, but I'm getting much better than I was before. People that I've known for, you know, years, or been associated with them or seen them in various locations, If they don't recognize my voice, they have no clue of who I am. Having a face transplant has a great potential of being life-changing. Anybody that has something different, I want them to have hope. I'm still trying to get used to identifying with the new face, knowing that it did actually come from someone else and the family that was so kind enough to allow their loved one to share uh, his face and, and, and the rest of his body with the donor community. I am sincerely glad that I, I went through it and I am going through it. Who knows what will be next, the day by day, new mercies unfold. This year, I'm not looking for Robert Chelsea. I am Robert Chelsea.